What's up, Browns fans? Welcome to episode 12 of the Dogs Podcast. Let's kick this thing off. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Zach Kopp, Justin Charles, and Josh All. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Good to see you here on a rainy Sunday. Uh, hopefully it doesn't rain too much. I want to try to get in nine holes after this. Are you guys going? <laughs> no. Oh, that's what. <laughs> uh, all right. Maybe next time. Uh, so, you no. Know, last week we broke down the first half of the uh, the schedule. We're going to do the second half today. But before we get into breaking down the schedule, you know, some things going on around the league. You know, Josh touched on it last week that this this past week was the opt out uh, week for the NFL. Oh, and was it ever? Mm. Yeah, I know. I saw a big name, C.J. Mosley, opting out for the Jets. Huge. Yeah, Jamal Adams left, and he was just like, "Why did I come here?" <laughs> <laughs> right. There's I'm a not, couple players. I'm not that. playing this year. Yeah. Uh, so he opted out, and then I think the biggest story here is that uh, what seven New England Patriots, when I type this up, have opted out. What Patrick Chung. Um, High Tower, High, High Tower, Tower. Yeah, it was a big one. And, uh, Bolden, yeah, and uh, was it Tooney, the, the uh, guard, um, one of their yeah, starting yeah, linemen, yeah. Tooney? Yep. And I maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, but don't tell me Bill Belichick's not behind this. Yeah. So yeah, we were talking about it right before we started. I, Colin, Colin Coward. As much as we talk bad of him, he had a very very interesting a show where he basically said that this is Belichick being prepared and this is yeah. him saying, Hey, all these guys, these are big time three Super Bowl winning studs. Yep. No, we're not. We're going to just go ahead and opt out. That defense is not great right now. And yeah. it was like number one last year. Yeah. And, and it's the only reason they won games really last year was their defense. Right. And don't these players are saying about their safety. I know that the NFL is not doing a bubble like the NBA, but I've I've looked at the uh, the standards and like for how they're going to have to operate this year. They're basically going to be living in mobile bubbles. Like when they're on the road, they're not getting there until like either the night before the game or the day of the game, and they're not allowed to leave the hotel. They're not allowed to go to the restaurants at the hotel except for the one designated for the players. They're not allowed to go to any of the places where other hotel that guests can go. They're, it's literally. Their group and they're going here, they're staying there, playing the game, and they're coming home. So unless these players, when they're playing home games or going out to the club and doing whatever in their hometown, they really don't have anything to be worried about. Yeah, and I mean, I look for the NFL to be pretty stringent on on these this bubble and these you yeah. know, restrictions they're putting in place because, as you've said before, Blake, on a previous podcast, there is so much money involved in the NFL and they're not going to let some, you know, one one player, you know, screw that up for them. Exactly. So and it's going to be. Look at the NHL and NBA zero tests or zero positive tests in like the last month mm-hmm. in their bubbles. And the, like I said, the NFL is, is basically going to be a mobile bubble. The only time these players are going to potentially be at risk is when they have their own free time. Anytime they're with a team, there's yeah. essentially zero risk. So. Don't tell me it's because of their safety. It's because Bill was like, "Hey guys, why Trevor just, Lawrence is coming out. <laughs> why yeah, don't you guys? Trevor. Why don't you guys take this six figure pay, mm-hmm. stay at home for a season, rest up the body, and we'll start this dynasty thing back up next year with Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields?" Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, hey, and I've already told you guys that I don't think Cam Newton's starting the season for the Patriots. Right? Yeah, right? you had that. Yeah, you yeah. had to take that. It was. Uh, Bringing him in just to kind of bring him in and say, oh, no, we don't we don't need him. To appease the fans, yep. too, because, you know, say, hey, look, we brought him in. He wasn't worth, you know, he, he yeah, it wasn't worth it. what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Right. Cam Newton's probably sitting home like, I hope that doesn't happen because the Patriots got me. Who's going to sign me? <laughs> yeah. Now, whenever we're sitting here in December talking about, you know, the Patriots and their upcoming playoff matchup and all right. that kind of stuff, you know, Absolutely. we'll look back <laughs> right. and think we were a little silly on this. Yeah. But right. I mean, if they somehow make I mean, with this, the team they're going to be throwing out there. If uh, is Bill Belichick even going to be trying this year though? He's just like, I don't, I don't I, I, whatever. The thing with Bill yeah. Belichick is, I feel like is a personal challenge for him yeah. all the time. Like I will take the most no name players from everywhere, and I will beat you. Yep. I yeah, guess we'll I don't see. Know. We will see. I don't think he wants to win, but we'll see. Uh, I think he wants to win. <laughs> uh, more Browns related than that. Jamie Gillen placed on the COVID list for testing positive. The Scottish Hammer, the punter. Um, 
I mean, so I'll have to quarantine for, what, 10 days, 14 days, and he'll be back. So that's not really a big deal. Yeah. I did just, as we were talking, I got on my phone there, I got an alert from Bleacher Report that Landry's on the pup list to start. Really? Yeah. So Wait. he's still recovering from his surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not too big of a scare unless something were to set him back. Then it would be a little scary. Well, technically, training camp has started, but I think I saw that – like real practices don't start for like another 20 yeah. days or something yep. like that. I like the that first also. couple of days is just testing Virtual. and then it's like, um, and then like some conditioning, basically like ramping up to contact. So real football practice still doesn't start till end of this month. Really? I want to have like a, uh, an Achilles tear ticker mm. week one <laughs> and just see how high the, the count goes. Week yeah. one of games or week one of training camp. I think week one day of, well, one yeah. of training yeah. camp yeah, is going to be, be real. It's going to be nasty. It's not going to be good. Mm-mm. A lot of low scoring games, I think, week one mm. for all you fantasy guys out there. Yeah. When I start my quest of my redemption tour, <coughs> reclaim my trophy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so, more Browns related news. Um, you know, we talked about this on the show a couple episodes ago. David Njoku rescinds his trade request, uh, apparently goes all in on Cleveland, doesn't want out of here anymore. He wants to stay, he wants to be part of the turnaround. Um, are we happy staying? What, what do we think? What do we think changed his mind? Uh, I, th- I think it was he had a meeting with the coaching staff yep. and some of the leaders on the team, and they kind of said, "Hey, your role wasn't going to be, you know, diminished by who we brought in with Austin Hooper or the new coaching staff. Like, if anything, you're going to thrive in this situation." Um, and I think they kind of just sold it, which we kind of told him there. We kind of said the same thing that yeah. that's what we would have done Get in Berea. When, he, when he said that. So, uh, you know, he came in said he's all wins time to time to work. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy he's staying because yeah. I think he's talented and I don't think we would have got anything for him. And it's depth that if that position is going to be as important as everybody yep. saying it is man one and there's injuries, one bad injury and we're in huge trouble at tight end. So I I agree. I think it was one of two things. I think it was either what Zach said, we got him in, we sat him down, we talked to him, made him see the light, you know, made him happy. Or his agent came to him and was like, listen, David, nobody wants you. (laughs) (laughs) They they call, they, they put out some feelers for trade requests and they're not getting nothing back. So I, I think, I think was, you need to appease, I think you need to go talk to these guys and see what's up. I could see it being a combo too. You know, definitely a good uh, reality check for Njoku from his agent and whoever else is in his circle. But you know, I I think that they did probably you know come to level with him and say you're not going to have to have these blocking responsibilities. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to be our athletic playmaking option out there because I, I I'll be honest with you guys, I've sat. Um, right on the sideline up at Brown's training camp, right by the tight ends uh, practicing. And all they're doing is practicing, blocking, you know, hitting and fitting into bags. And he was the worst one. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember sitting there watching this thinking he kind of sucks at this drill. Right. And all these other tight ends who were trying to make the roster are really getting after it. I'm like, this guy kind of blows at blocking. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I kind of saw it firsthand. <laughs> and you obviously know football, but you're not like a tight ends coach. <laughs> right. So right, is right. that glaringly obvious that he sucked at it for you? Imagine what his coaches were thinking. I, well, I know because I'm like, he's hitting a bag. It looks terrible. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's but. super funny. Um, all right. Well, so I hope, hopefully he lives up to his potential. I know. I think he's, he needs to have a big season because he wants to make that money. And then we need him to have a big season because I think if he does, he's kind of, you know, he could be an X factor for us. He is a much better hybrid type player, you know, between a receiver and a tight end. Let him go out and and size up the linebackers. They're not going to cover him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One guy, I did see another thing in Brown's news uh, that did live up to his potential last year. Nick Chubb was on the Jim Rome show. Kind of went in on the 2019 Browns with some, a little bit of smack talk saying, you know, we had all the talent in the world last year, but we didn't put the work into it. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. That's what so, Nick Chubb said. Yeah, so kind of throwing a little shade at some people oh that boy. you know didn't maybe put in the work last year, and probably he's Fat probably Baker. he's probably the one guy who <laughs> Was, did put in yeah, the work. You can see all the room um, talk there, That's and and this shocking. is coming from Nick Chubb, who is not a not a talker. I'm surprised it's, he took an interview. I can't believe he <laughs> said it. Yeah, like good for him. Yeah, he said that's exactly what it was with us. We didn't work hard. And that's and, what you want to see out of like. Not only is he probably our best offensive player, but he's a he's a true leader on the yeah, team. Yeah, we need Absolutely. that. And that's leader. what we need. Yep. That's what Baker needs to be like. 
Yeah, stop shooting commercials and start yeah, Bl- Blake's, leading this team. Blake's look or legging what Bigger's looking like coming into this season. Hey, man, he's looking trim, short shorts. <laughs> looks like my quarterback. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I, I, one more thing. The NFL 100 list came out, and I don't want to get into it too much because it really irritated me, but they had Nick mm. Chubb at like 30-something, which is just ridiculous. Well, he'll keep climbing that list. He, they had him as like the fifth best running back. There's no way Nick Chubb is the fifth best running back. I mean, do you know who they had above him? I'm guessing like, like Zeke was probably Zeke, above. Probably Derrick Henry, Dalvin Cook, is Kamara up there? And I can't yeah, remember CMC. CMC for sure. Uh, but here's the thing: Are you upset that he's even to be like named with those guys? Those are all really, really good. I'm guys. taking him over Derrick Henry. I'm taking him over Dalvin Cook, and honestly, I'm probably taking him over Zeke. Ooh, Ooh. boy! But, I mean, this year will tell. You. I mean, yeah. this year will tell because I think it's. I mean, we've seen this where a Browns running back has had a really good season, and then yeah. they kind of fall off. I think if he backs it up, there's no I mean, question that he gets second season in a row. That was he almost had a thousand in his first year, and he yeah. didn't even get to play the first what three four That's games. That's true. Yeah, it's true. He's a stud. He's a stud. Real quick, I want to correct an error that I had. It was not uh, Joe Tooney, the offensive lineman from the Patriots, who opted out. It was Marcus Cannon, the right okay. tackle? Okay, we knew it was one of the big guys up front. Yeah, right. All right, so that's all kind of, you know, a little bit of news what's going around in the league. So what brings us here today, we want to finish breaking down our 2020 schedule. Uh, I think we took it up to the bye week last week. I think Josh has a quick recap for anybody who might have missed last week's episode. All right, so let's uh, let's start with the most unrealistic here. Uh, we've got Blake and Zach are each tied. They got the, <laughs> <laughs> at eight games, they have the Browns six and two. So Leading that division. Yeah, that's, that's right. what you're that's talking right. about being crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Justin has them at five and three, and I've got them sitting at a much more realistic four and four. And we'll see who agrees with that. I might get some backlash, but <laughs> I feel like you're probably definitely the most realistic. But I don't care; right. they're going to be six and two, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see where we all end up after the second half of the season here. Yes, I mean I know where I'm headed. <laughs> I know where I'm going. He's heading to the playoffs. That's yeah. what Justin said. I think one thing that's interesting about this, at least for me, is I didn't. You know, I said. A couple episodes ago, that I see the Browns going, you know, ten and six somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I'm not making these predictions based trying to make it fit ten and six. I'm I'm just looking at it game by game basis and seeing do I think they can. So at the end of this, I I might have them fourteen and two for all I know. I have, (laughs) you know, right now I have no idea what we're gonna. I'm not trying to make it fit a mold, which is you know maybe why I have them six and two, which you know. I think we have the talent to win be six and two. Are we gonna be six and two? I don't know. We'll see. We might be more like Josh's four and four. Right. Which takes us into week ten here. Yeah, we got the versus uh, a, a very good team, Houston mm. Texans. Yes. At home. Uh win total for the Texans going into this year over under is eight. Surprisingly kind of low. Yeah. So this is one of those games where I, I think the Browns should be better than the Texans. But because the Texans have Deshaun Watson and in our history, we don't win games that I think we should win, even though we're better, we just still lose games that we should win. I'm going to pick the Texans to win this game. Wow. Cool. That, because Blake, t- <laughs> Blake is tarnishing the Browns record. Right off I, the bat. No, some, I don't, you're not going to win every game. And I just think they do have... They got so much talent at quarterback. Deshaun Watson's one of those guys that can just completely take over a game. And so until I see a stop in a league level quarterback like that, I'm going to pick the Texans. Okay. So now this is good. This is fun. This is fun because last week you were so high on them and now you're taking them to lose right out of the bye. Mm-hmm. I was kind of low on the Browns a little bit oh, the first God. half of the season. I think we come out of the bye and beat Houston because they really? do have a great quarterback, but their O-line is not that great. And who's he throwing the ball to now? Hawkins is gone. I guarantee Fuller's going to be hurt by this Absolutely, point. Yeah. Brandon Cooks might be in concussion protocol. They might be down to <laughs> somebody who's not even on the team right now. Hey, you're forgetting about David Johnson, though. Yeah. <laughs> 45-year-old David He'll be Johnson. trucking along. Yeah. Duke's yeah. still there. Yeah, Duke's there. Duke yeah. Duke's still, still there. there. Revenge game. I, uh, I, I got us losing this game, too. I, I, I'm a big fan of Deshaun Watson. Um, mm-hmm. I like watching him play. I think it's a close game. I don't think that it's one team is blowing out the other. I it, now, and I'm going to go based on the fact that everybody's healthy at this point because I think Brandon Cooks is still going to be. I think he's going to succeed because Deshaun Watson can just air the ball out. Um, yep. So I'm going to think this game is going, you know, 35, 32. You know, it's a high scoring game. 
you know, at going into the going at the end here. Uh, plus, looking at the history, the Browns do not play well against Houston, no matter how. And Houston's had some terrible teams. And I got it pulled up that the Houston Texans lead. We've played them ten times since they've become a team. We've only won three. Do you remember the recent one too, where we got oh. smoked, where Baker threw three, three interceptions first, yeah, in yep. the first half? Yeah. Yeah. So that we've lost the not last that two. Long ago. Yeah, we lost in 2017 to them, uh, 33 to 17. Then lost in 2018, 29 to 13. Were the the most two recent ones, so. Like, so I uh, I'm gonna continue that pattern. Also, I'm gonna say that we're gonna take the loss here. Um, this team, say what you want, was very very close to going to the Super Bowl. Probably, who knows if they would have won it or not. If I remember sitting there watching them go up what twenty one nothing, twenty four nothing on the Chiefs, and being like, oh hey, man, Deshaun Watson might have a shot at. I just feel like he's such a big time player. Like the bigger the spotlight with that guy, the bigger he performs. Um, you know, whether whether they stay healthy or not, I just I don't know. I just see them and be and I don't think it's gonna be high scoring. I think maybe twenty four or twenty one lower, but I just that guy's a winner. Hey, Dabo Sweeney didn't call him the Michael Jordan of football for no reason. Those are yeah. some of the, like, I, I, even though, like, Ohio State wasn't in those college playoff games, when it was, like, Clemson against Oklahoma and, the, like, they were just complete shootouts and then seeing a team finally being able to take out, uh, not Oklahoma, I'm sorry, Alabama, take the take them out was just crazy. Something I never thought, you know, another team would be able to do. But, so we got three L's and a W on yeah. the uh, Texans. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's Josh right. has got him. That got was his team for, over five hundred. That was hard for me to say because I really don't think Bill O'Brien's that great of a coach, and no. I really don't think their roster, top to bottom, is as good as ours. I just think they have a really, really special quarterback. Yeah, and I want to see us do it against that guy before I can pick him over us over him. I think we have a really special quarterback. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> you made a lot I of money it. for Hulu last year. I hope. <laughs> so that takes. Yeah, us. you did more wins for them. Yeah. Right. Week 11, Philly. At home, right? Yes, at yes. home, o, uh, over, under on their win total and sitting at nine and a half. So to me, I'm not as high on the Eagles as other people are. Uh, I think the Browns, especially at home, I think the Browns win this game because I think Carson Wentz probably hurt by this point in the season. Uh, and who's their backup now? Hurts. Jalen Hurts, a rookie. Hurts. So... You know, and I know Lincoln Riley made him look really good at Oklahoma, but he wasn't good enough to play at Alabama when they ran like a pro style offense, which is, you know, what they're gonna run in Philly. Sure, um, if he has to play quarterback for them, they don't have an offense designed for him like the Ravens did for Jackson. Their yeah. offense is designed for Carson Wentz. Yeah. Who is not Jalen Hurts. And I just think that their receivers are trash. <laughs> I don't you know they're, they're receivers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guys that they say that they brought in, their, yeah. their biggest addition have been wide receiver with Kalen Rager. <laughs> yeah, give me <laughs> give me another receiver under the age yeah. of twenty five on that team. Everyone else is over thirty. Yeah, the, I swear. Slow. They're super slow. I remember last year they said like they created the least amount of separation like any receiving crew in the uh, league. So I, I'm picking the Browns to win this one. Is so Sean Jackson still with them? Yes. Yes, he's if still he there. Stays healthy. That guy, is, he's still. He's yeah, he's, they say he's healthy right now. He can right get now. some separation, Blake. That yeah. guy can. He can. He can play. I mean, when was the last time he like had a really good season? Though he started off real hot. Oh, last but year. a really good season. You're right. Yeah. Like it's been. Yeah, probably a couple I, teams ago. Yeah, yeah I got us. I uh, one Philadelphia is just another one of those teams that kind of like last year. One Carson Wentz is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and yeah, I know he gets hurt a lot, but. To see what he did at the end of last year with the team he Nobody. had, yep. not many quarterbacks are, you know, putting together those types of numbers. And this is kind of on the article that I'm looking at, you know, it's a reminder that Paul DiBodesta said that Carson Wentz would never become a top 20 quarterback uh, when we uh, weren't wanting to draft him in that draft back. And I think it was 2016. DiBodesta said that? Yeah. <laughs> so that makes me feel not quite as good about what we're doing <laughs> this year. Yeah. Like, uh, how good is he uh, evaluating talent? Yeah, so, yeah, I guess we'll see. Uh, we have, uh, I got us winning this game, a uh, close one, though, 21-17, something like that. I think it's a close game. Take it, Justin. Um, I also see a close game. I see a both sides of the ball running it a lot. Yeah. I think it comes down to 
what whether you think that they're crap or not, I think Peterson is a very good coach. Oh, yeah, he is. Great well, offensive yeah. mind. And I see them beating us. Philly special at the end of the yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. I, um... <sighs> Is P- Peters is kind of a one hit wonder. Not uh, really, bro. Not really. I mean, they won the Super Bowl, and I mean, they were not that good last year. The only reason they were any good last year is because Jason Garrett's a worst coach, <laughs> is terrible, and couldn't take that stacked roster of the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was all on the plate for the Cowboys, and they just gave it back to the Eagles. The Eagles didn't earn that. The Cowboys gave it to them. I don't know about that. I don't know. How do you not know? But that's a hundred percent. I mean, you look at, yeah, you look at Peterson. He's he went thirteen and three, nine and seven, nine and seven. Yeah, made the playoffs every single year. Yep, and won a Super Bowl. Oh, he went seven and nine his that. first year. Did go seven and nine his first year, but he was taking on a yeah Shermer coach team. Then Wentz get hurt like pretty early on into that season. I think he did. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm thinking at this point in time, I'm with you. I'm with. You said it, right? Blake Wentz is probably, I think, I don't think he's out of this game. I think he's banged up, probably hobbling a little bit. Nobody's 100%, especially at this point in the season. But I think at this point in our season, Baker's rolling high. Uh, I think Chubb and Hunt come out. And um, I, I have us win in this game. I think, I just, I don't think that Philly's got the talent. And I think our defense will be good enough to, I think it'll be a close game. But I got us, uh, guys with three wins in a row here. Oh boy! After starting four and four, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, I guess on this half oh. of the bye, it'd be two in a row. Okay, yeah. right. So you got to sit in six and four right now. Yeah, I got to sit seven and three, which is I think right. You two s- have him at seven three, and Justin's now down to five and five. Yeah, oh, he's wow. the oldest one. He's been burnt the most. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that takes us week twelve. Yes. Jacksonville. At Jacksonville, mm. over under for their win total going into the year four and a half with Sounds about Gardner right. Minshew. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm a, I like Gardner Minshew. I think he's, he, he's kind of like a poor man's Baker Mayfield. Yeah. <laughs> <Except you're, laughs> I'm dressing one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's awesome. Though. I think he's hilarious. Um, but that doesn't mean I think the Browns lose this game. Right. I don't think Gardner Minshew's carrying the Jaguars uh, over us. I see this being another W for the Browns. Is there like another organization out there right now that's probably worse than Jaguars where you're going, you got talent and they're trying to move the talent out. Like I, yeah. I don't, I don't understand their, I don't understand them at all. Like uh, that is the Browns have been, I would hate to be a Jacksonville yeah. fan. I would hate to be a Jets fan. I mean, I feel like um, the Jets else is are better off than the Jaguars, which is terrible. You know what, you know what screwed the Jaguars is they missed on their quarterback. Uh, and <laughs> they Ram- missed and Ramsey walked that, because they missed on their quarterback. <laughs> yeah. they, they drafted, what was his name? Blake Bortles. Blake yeah. Bortles. They drafted Bortles. Like third overall, I and, think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they kept playing him, even though he was like the re. If they, they only won ever because the defense was good. Mm-hmm. Blake Bortles cost him more wins with his than he ever won them. And I think their good players just got tired of it. And That they, defense and, was insane, And too. they walked. Yeah. And... They missed on their quarterback, and look how much it set up. I mean, we know all about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, you miss, every year you, you can have all this talent around you. Look at our defenses the last ten years. Yep, yep. And it does nothing for you if you just keep missing on the quarterback. And they miss. Not only did they miss, then they were too afraid to admit that they missed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you miss on the quarterback, and then all of a sudden, well, it looks like we missed on the head coach, and we missed on the front office, and that's that's the cycle we've been in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, forever. Yeah, this is one of those games where I think the Browns come out and kind of establish their will uh, running the ball. I know mm. that the Jaguars have Joe Schobert now, but that's not going to be enough to keep Nick Chubb from running all over Jacksonville. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so I got us winning this one pretty big. Yep. I think we win by two touchdowns. Yep. <laughs> but are you, are you going to say I'm they're going to lose? I'm going to go with a loss. Oh, oh my God. In the world. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> look, look, look. I'm so confused. I'm like, why is it so quiet? <laughs> because, <What is> happening? <laughs> all right, I've watched too many Brown seasons where we'll win a couple games. It's like, all right, we're rolling. And then we get on the road. We're going to go down south. You know, this is what time of the year. It's going to be nice and warm. We're going to go down there with our heads up high. And Minshew's going to Minshew us. I just, <laughs> I, I got a bad feeling that we come out just lackluster and they edge us out. And we're going to be very upset. You worried that Odell's going to get back with that same guy that uh, hooked him over that boat rental before that playoff <laughs> game? And 
that's where this is. I, I, if I we know. lose this game, I cannot wait for the episode that week because it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. So you're thinking Minchu is just going to burn us? You think he's, he's, I'm thinking that Minchu is going to actually shine in this game. And I, 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 I cannot, I just, I've seen it happen too many times where the Browns are like, Hey, they're putting it together. And then they lose a game where it's like, how did you lose to that team? They do it every year. And this is that game. I usually say, how do we beat that one team? <laughs> how do we lose all? The-? Usually I'm like, well, we lost. So not, at least we're consistently uh, losing. I did not see anybody picking a loss against yeah. the Jaguars. We've lost the last, we've lost the last three games against the Jaguars. <laughs> so it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, it is. For the last five. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Sorry, Sorry Browns fans. Sorry. No. <laughs> you know what? Though, that not, tells it you. wouldn't be crazy, though. I mean, I, I think it's crazy, but who knows? Maybe every year there's like a team where they come out and they're like. It's like a trap game. Yeah. They're like you see it in college all the time. Like super good team just beat, you know, top five ranked team. The next Appalachian week, they're, State they're beat Michigan. Yeah, they're struggling the next yeah. week against somebody that has two wins. Or they yeah. got, you know, they play Rutgers this week, but next week's a top five matchup. And yeah, they just completely overlooked them. Um, but that's it. Kind of tells you like how it's hard to separate what we think of the Browns' history when trying to pick this schedule. It's impossible to pick us to win all these games without thinking, yeah, but we're the Browns we're going to lose games that we should win. You know? Seen it every year, and that's the thing. <laughs> Just, I mean, the Patriots got beat by the Dolphins last year. I mean, this stuff happens. Yeah, we're not the Patriots. And the, <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, that moves us into what, the Titans? Yep. Yeah. Revenge. Um, this is a tough game for me to pick because I think the Titans are very well coached. Yep. I think they have a good offensive line, which actually took a hit by losing Conklin. I think they have a good running back. And I think Tannehill is is serviceable in the way in what they want him to do. They don't ask him to do too much. But I think our team top to bottom is better on paper than the Titans roster. But I feel like I need to see more out of Stefanski when it comes to good coaching because we haven't seen anything out of him. And I think Vrabel has these guys. He runs a tight ship. And he's got them, you know, it's like they got better and better every single week. As the Browns were getting worse and worse every week, the Titans were just getting better and better. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick the Titans on this one. Yeah, I got the Titans uh, to win this one as well. I think this is, a, this is one of those knockout run games, the entire game, low scoring, first mm-hmm. one to score yep. 17 type game wins. Uh, a lot of, I mean, we've talked a lot about Freddie Kitchens and that opening game about, you know, how we weren't prepared, stuff like that. I think we forget that we were in that game going into the, like at the end of the third quarter, I just pulled it up. So with two minutes left in the third quarter, scores 15 to 13, David and Joe, who just caught a, a three yard touchdown pass. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, all right, Hey, we're right back in this four and a half game minutes later we're down 29 to 13 yeah well baker just couldn't stop throwing interceptions he's so doing his philip rivers impression so, oh, 75 well, yard yeah, screen was, pass that yeah. freaking the next derrick henry yeah, screen the pass. very next play it took 13 seconds and that touchdown the browns just scored was gone we were down 22 13 and then with 12 so two minutes into the fourth quarter they scored another touchdown yeah and we were down 29 13 against a team like that we just at that point in the year we weren't going to ever come back from being down 16 to a team that's going to control the clock and run the ball. Yep. But yeah, so I got us, I got us losing this one, a tight one. I like, I really like Mike Vrabel. Mm-hmm. Yep. Loved his draft, uh, his draft, uh, it was real. Camera. What, was, what was going in on the there? <laughs> just like on the crapper in the background. <laughs> this is just such that a, door was, that door was closed on night two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. I did see that. <laughs> Uh, you want to go, Josh, or what? Sure. Okay. Real quick and simple. They do not get over that Jacksonville loss that I put them at, and they're going to lose this one, too. Okay. I uh, I think I'm going to go pretty much where Zach was headed. I think that coaching, and then also, at this point in the season, Henry, it seems like the more games that go, he just gets, he just keeps getting better and better and better. Um, I just see this being both teams running the ball a lot. Um but also at the same time, just maybe we make one more, you know, one mistake. So I see Tennessee winning this game. This is a game though, where I'm not, I'm not, sh- if we come out and win this game, I'm not shocked. No, 
And if we think that they're a legit playoff team, then these are the type of teams that we should be at least being in with and beating. If we think they're going to the Super Bowl, which that's what I think every year. So, <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, then we've got Zach and Blake are both at eight and four, and Justin and I are both at six and six. Yep. Yeah, I got us at two and two after the bye. We start out like, uh, you know, we start out the season on fire, and I got a struggling going down the stretch. I do think this the schedule gets tougher after the bye. Oh, I think so. Right after the bye, yeah, we end a little easier, but going in here to week fourteen. I think the toughest game left on our schedule, uh, opponent wise. Obviously, we still have another divisional game coming up, but with the Ravens, that's. Yep. I mean, going in there, we said they're over under is eleven to five. A lot of people got them not favored to lose any game all year. Uh, a team that you know could run the table. A lot of people think that they might. Uh, with Lamar Jackson, he was ranked number one by the players uh, as the best player in the NFL. Uh, I think we, I think we play him tough. I think we play him tough, but I think uh, we lose. I think we lose. I think this one's. I'm gonna go high scoring game uh, with this one. I think we go. I think it's gonna go high scoring. I'm thinking like a 42, 35 kind of a shoot up, shootout type of a game where we can't stop Lamar Jackson, but they can't stop our offense type of we have I don't have many of those on our list this is one where I think the Browns are gonna have to kind of keep scoring to keep up I agree uh I want to rewind real quick did the players forget that Patrick Mahomes is in the NFL yeah, <laughs> disrespect <laughs> of Patrick Mahomes, and he, he noted, noted it, it. Yeah, yeah I saw that that yeah, was awesome he saw what did he, he say just uh, like a uh, piece of paper like I was like an emoji thing but right. he just said noted yeah <laughs> like yeah. come on guys the guy just got a 500 million dollar contract He's easily like the eye test best quarterback I've maybe ever seen, like just watching him play the game. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me Lamar Jackson's the best player in the NFL just because he can run real fast. The guy is still a below average passer. Well, let's just wait and see here what, may, what next year, what kind of contract Jackson gets because right. I don't think he gets anything close to no. what Mahomes got. No, no, he doesn't even get half of it. And that'll tell you right there what they think of him. Yeah, I mean... So back on track, we might have to do an episode just about the the Lamar Jackson. list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, because that just that's crazy to me. But I also, despite j- talking crap about Lamar Jackson, there, I think they beat us in this game. Um, I don't like picking the Ravens to beat us twice, but you know, I want to see. Maybe I'll change my tune for this game after Week One if we play them tough. But usually by this point in the season, the Ravens are making the push for the Super Bowl or the playoffs, and we're getting ready for our Super Bowl, which is the draft. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And they're, co- I, I, I'm a big Harbaugh fan, uh, John Harbaugh mm. fan. Uh, it's crazy that they were talks like we getting might, rid of it, getting rid of him. What is it with people? It's just our, like, yeah, like, like spoiled Tom. people Gosh. in our division. Yep. Like don't want I, Mike Tomlin. Don't want John Harbaugh. Yeah. It ran, uh, what was Cincinnati's coach? Marvin Lewis. Marvin, Marvin Lewis. Lewis. All Marvin Lewis did was go to the playoffs every year. Yeah. <laughs> like, sorry, he didn't win a game, but at least you were playing. Yeah. We are yeah, sitting at home. We couldn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> the turnover in Cleveland so much that we just took the door off the hinges. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a- <laughs> yeah. So, okay, what do you guys got? Me and Blake both got losses here uh, with the Ravens in week 14. Um. I'm going to go with a win. Whoa. In All Cleveland. right. There we go. I like Cleveland. it. Um, very, very physical AFC North game. Um, both teams have just crazy, crazy good running games. Yes. And I see that being it, it being that kind of game. And whether we think that, whether there'll be fans or no fans being in Cleveland, not having to travel, I think that plays into it. Um, and I just don't want to pick the Ravens. <laughs> right. I, like I'm okay with week one, picking them, you know, to beat Cleveland in their stadium, you know, on with new coaching. I think things are clicking at this point. It's at the end of the year. Um, and I want to pick Cleveland. I want to believe. I'm going with you here, man. Because okay. <laughs> now on my, on my projections here, I got them coming off two straight road losses. Mm-hmm. And then the Ravens, you know, this is exactly the kind of thing that happens. We talked about the Jaguars being that trap game for the Browns. I think we're that trap game for the Ravens who might be rolling pretty high right now. Like mm-hmm. you said, looking at the playoffs, where are they going to finish up? And then they come into Cleveland and we just punch them in the mouth. Yeah. And we end up walking away with a victory. And I got this beautiful vision in my mind of, Lamar Jackson getting out of the pocket, trying to juke Miles Garrett. Next thing you know, Miles just just plants him, 
So let me get this straight. You got us losing to the Jaguars. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> and beating the Ravens. What happened last year? Yeah. <laughs> This is true. <laughs> what we do you call that? The Freddy Fluke? The Freddy Fluke. Freddy Fluke. I'm going to so, get that uh, copyright pending. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to, I mean, just, it's kind of sickening to look at what our record's been playing the Ravens. Oh, and literally oh between them and Steelers, it's, it's horrible. 30, 31 and 11 all time. That's Ravens, yeah, better than I thought it would be, honestly. Uh, but we have won four of the last 24. <laughs> do you know the one that I like really, really like stands out for me is, when they kicked the field goal and it hit oh. the back of the upright and bounced out <laughs> with Dawson, and you're like, oh my gosh, no way. You're, yeah. you're like so used to losing that you're just like, well, that's how it would end. Yep. And then you, we end up winning the game, and it's, you know, so yeah. one unbelievable. Of the, one of the first Browns games I ever went to was actually a Browns-Ravens game. I was in high school, and this is how long ago this was. I've, their their quarterback, I can't remember who their quarterback was, but ours was uh, Charlie Fry. Mm. Oh, and our, like, our best playmaker was Dennis Northcutt. And I remember at halftime we were getting beat and we had like six yards of offense and we looked <laughs> awful. And then we came out and I think Dennis Northcutt returned a punt for a touchdown. We ended up coming back and winning. And Charlie Fry walked off the field holding like a number one up <laughs> over the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the last game of the year. We just went like two and 14 or something. He's you old never up. saw him again. <laughs> he never played ever again. <laughs> so that was one of my first ever Browns games. Nice. Uh, so I have seen us beat the Ravens, but they didn't have Lamar Jackson at that time. No. I think they had Mark Bulger. I'm looking oh, right like here. That. So oh, yeah. they're they hit back when Matt Stover was their kicker. Matt Stover or whatnot was a really good kicker back then. Uh yeah, Kyle Bull threw for hundred and <laughs> threw for hundred and fifty one yards passing that game. The game I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 151 yards passing. Charlie Fry outdid him with 199. <laughs> <laughs> outdid <laughs> quarterback back, tool. <laughs> back when we had uh one of our better running backs of that decade, Jamal Lewis, was our running oh, back. Man, Jamal Lewis, man, his he was legs an animal. just never stopped. Yeah, and hey. we got him after after Baltimore after he had put some serious two thousand yard season right yeah. for the Ravens. Yeah. So, all right. So, Josh, did you pick there? Yeah, he has us winning. You have us win. Oh yeah, because you have us winning. And Baker runs, runs off the- holding the number one. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, uh, tell him uh, it's not a number one. It's a hold on. I got to shoot one more Hulu commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody bring that uh, tractor right here. I'm about to cut this gl- uh, grass up real quick for this new <laughs> commercial. Right. So now this is. I think now we're entering that stretch of. Are it's, we going to make the playoffs? It's make or break time now. You've put yourself yes. in position now. Where just you don't mess it up. You have uh, if you got if you're on our side where we have the record, just yeah. don't mess it up. You you have something to play for now. You're at this point in the season where if you take care of business, you sh- you should be in the playoffs. Yeah, we're, this is where we're like as Browns fans, you're like, oh man, we got some hope. We might do it this year rather than just being like, I got to get my fantasy team into the playoffs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, type of a thing. Ooh, ooh. Uh, so we got week 15 at the Giants. Over under win total for them is sitting at six and a half. Uh, they're going to lose this game because I think I think this is a game, especially I think that Stefanski is a good coach, and I think he's going to have us ready to go into this stretch. How we said, you know, in years past, we might not be ready for this kind of thing. I think he's going to have us ready for us going down the stretch to make this playoff push. And, you know, we don't really know what the Giants are going to be with their new coaching staff. We don't really know how good Daniel Jones is. He fumbles like one every four snaps. Danny uh, Dimes. Yeah, I think I Danny think this drops. Is, <laughs> this is a big win for the Browns, in my opinion. I thought you were. I thought you were going to pick the, uh, the Giants there. I oh. was like super confused. I'm like, oh man. Oh, also, okay. I think in this, you just stop Saquon from big chunk plays, and you hold him down to his, you know, his like 1.8 yards per carry on all his other runs. And I think we completely shut down yeah, our offense. Is there any way in the world that this is not Odell's biggest game of the season? Oh, yeah. Oh, He's been be. waiting for this. Are you kidding me? Waiting yeah, for I, it. Yeah. Him and Baker are having a talk before. I mean, look what happened the last time we went back to the stadium. It was just to play the Jets. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. what, 89-yard touchdown on that quick slam? That one-handed like that. grab. The one-handed grab was nice. Oh. Yeah. I think the Giants are going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Wow. I'm just saying. And I also, to me, oh this is a big game for Nick Chubb. Yeah. Because I think he gets disres- – I think Saquon gets so much love – and Nick Chubb gets so disrespected, and he might not talk much, but Nick Chubb sees that stuff. You know, he's a man. He's not 40 yet, but he's a man. <laughs> and, well played. Yeah, you know, he doesn't like that. And I think Baker thinks he should have won Rookie of the Year over Saquon. So, for me, uh, you know, Odell coming back to New York, a lot of chips on shoulders in this game for the Browns. I see us taking care of business. 
I I agree. I think we win this game easy. I think that uh, we kind of add insult to injury, though Dell does have a big game. I think by this point in the season, him and Stefanski, you know, are getting along, and, and Stefanski's like, hey, this is this one's your this game. One, this is for you. Yeah, this is that game where Nick Chubb, like, yeah, well, you know, Nick Chubb could have a big game, but we're going to make it a, a priority to get Odell the ball yeah. type of a game. I think we win this one easy. I see this being um, like an offensive shootout. I see. Oh, I, I don't see them scoring. No, I, I literally think that both teams put up some points. Fun game to watch. Um, but I see the Browns winning. Like, I, I think just as far as rosters, we're just a lot better than them. Um, and like you said, with their coach, they – wasn't he in the Patriots like what special teams coach or something last year? What? Yeah, yeah. Was, okay. it, was he wide receiver? I don't yeah, know. He was like, something. I remember they picked him, and I was just like, "Who's this guy?" You know, like <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people thought it was going to be Matt Rule who ended up going to uh, Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, that's who. That's where everybody kind of thought he was going. Yeah. Why do you think it's going to be an offensive shootout? I just, I mean, listen, Danny Dimes, Danny Dimes. <laughs> yeah, I, he's, whether, he's not that but, good. <laughs> hey. He's when better it, than Eli. When and he Eli, came out, uh, when he first came out, he had like a good game, and, and then it, so you like peaked up here, mm-hmm. and then it was. We'll see. <laughs> we'll be talking about it. Sound yeah. effects we'll be provided by yeah. yeah. Blake Reinecker. Yeah, it was. You think not, this is going to be just completely one sided game? Yes. Like to me, this is for you know this is a poop stomping. I can't say <laughs> what I wanted to say because this <laughs> is a PG podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, then you guys are going to hate my take on this game. Oh, boy. Oh, here we uh, go. Uh, yep. I'm just kidding. The <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Yeah. I can't, I can't pick the Giants in this one. Are you kidding me? I was going to yeah. lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, Danny Dimes was way better than Eli last year. But yeah. he, yes. Eli came out on a on a walker. I yeah. mean, yeah, anybody would have been better. I, I don't know. New York, they got some growing to do. Both teams do in New York. Yeah. I, I think the Browns are ready. They, yeah, Odell's going to dominate. It's going to be a lot of fun mm-hmm. for us. Speaking of teams in New York that need Next to grow. Game. Next yep. game, the Jets. I see this is another us just taking them behind the woodshed. Mm-hmm. Um, I think at this point, this I mean, honestly at this point in the season, the Jets might not be playing for anything except for they might their players might be doing what our players were doing last year for Freddie. Hey, we can't win this game because we got to get rid of Adam Gase. Yeah, Adam we can't Gase. be bringing this guy back. Oh, that, that and their and their kind of their GM. Uh, I think that they've made a decision that they are rebuilding mm-hmm. uh, this team. I think they're kind of taking almost like the Oakland Raiders approach from a couple of years ago. Of, hey, we just got rid of Jamal Adams, so we're not wanting to win really this year because that guy was our focal point of our defense. CJ Mosley sitting out. Yep. Uh, we just got a bunch of picks. I know we did get a player back from Seattle, but we're looking three, two, three years down the line of being back to what they were, you know, four or five years ago. Okay, listen, when the when the best player on your team, and he's like the foundational piece of your defense, says, I'm not playing for this coach anymore, Yeah, you got to get rid of that coach. That guy, right. Adam Gase, is... He's easily the worst head coach in the league. I, I don't understand how he's still coaching. Even yeah. after his stint in Miami, you look what Tannehill has come out and after. done afterward for Tennessee for a good coach who knows how to utilize him and get the best out of him. He looked pedestrian under Gase. Uh, Kenyon Drake, <laughs> same. He stifles his talent. Sam Darnold, I, I don't know if he'll ever be a good quarterback because of Adam Gase. I mean, look at the Dolphins. The Dolphins were actively trying to lose games last year. And they, they just put out there, hey, we don't want to win this game. And they won, what, five games? Well, yeah, yeah Fitzpatrick was just yeah, out there yeah. swinging, yeah. swinging it, you know, bouncing off tacklers. Yeah. For whatnot, you know, for wins. What's their coach's name? Flores? Yeah, Brian Flores. Yes. Flores. He had that team playing hard. I mean, they were way better than anybody gave him credit for, and that was never the case with Gase. Yeah, and just, just to clarify, I – when we say like they're out there actively trying to lose games, I think that's more of a front office thing, Mm -hmm. right? They're not giving the coaches for a guy like Brian Flores. It's his first time being a head coach. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to actively lose a game. Like the the coaches want to win because it's their job. It's their livelihood. It's their reputation, all that stuff. So it, yeah, Brian Flores, I think is actually a pretty good head coach. I think he's got the makings of being a good and they got way better in the draft. Oh yeah. A solid draft. Tua coming in. As long as Tua is healthy. I think Tua was, uh, if, if it had been interesting with the season Joe Burrow had 
And if they were both 100% healthy, because that was the only reason Joe Burrow was the consensus number one pick was because there's question marks about Tua. Mm -hmm. Like who would, that would have been interesting of what would have went down there at the number one pick. Yeah. Because I think if Tua is healthy, I would have taken Tua. I think Tua is going to, I think Tua's game train, I think he's a Russell Wilson. Mm Mm-hmm. But I got us. I got us. I mean, winning this game fairly easy as well, not especially being off, at home. Not to get off track too with the Jets, but like, and you just threw the, a bunch of money at Le'Veon Bell. Like, yeah, completely backwards philosophy. Like, hey, we're gonna pay this guy a ton of money. We're also gonna let our best player on defense just walk. Just yeah. All right, so Le'Veon Bell is probably not making it the season. Does he? Even, yeah. Does he even? Yeah, make it through the season. He doesn't want to be I, as far as being traded. I think. I think they might trade him. I. I. I wouldn't shock me at all. And if you're Le'Veon Bell, please trade me. He went there thinking, hey, we're going to rebuild and we're going to... Le'Veon Bell, he went he, he, on a different team, would be what he was kind of back with Pittsburgh. I think on that team, he's just like, yeah, Man, yeah. I got I to make my own hole every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I was on Pittsburgh, I would try to get him back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Now, yeah. oh my well, gosh, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, though. So when, when they signed Bell, that was before they hired Gase. Correct. Mm-hmm. So yes. when Gaze came in, that's when all the trade talk started coming up about Bell. And it was like, they he didn't want Bell. Well, yeah. Gaze said straight up at the press conference, he's like, well, he's like, I don't even know, like, for sure if, if I even want this guy, you know. And yes, it's like, he was <laughs> just, like, looking around. Yeah. Around. If I'm laying on him, like, I'm the best guy on this team. Yeah. Get me out of here. That's oh what Adam Gase is remembered for. Like, <laughs> that press conference is so strange. I've it never took like seen three anything. edibles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just totally out of it. <laughs> never mind. Yeah. So, do we, so are we all chalking up wins here? Yeah, I think yes. so. Across the board. Okay. Yes. All right. So what do we got us at, Josh? Do you know what we have? Or I what got records? it. So you know what? This is, this is pretty cool because we've all taken different paths mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. different takes on the Browns. Blake and Zach are both at 10 and 5, and me and Justin are both at 9 and 6. We're pretty close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're one game off here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, into a big game yes. uh, going in here to week 17 versus the Steelers at home. Their win total, we've been over it, sitting at 9. Tough game. Probably, if they're healthy, coming into this game is one of the best defenses of the season. Uh, coming into this game, big, uh, big game here. So, to me, this is this could be a game that decides playoff seating or mm-hmm. you know who makes the playoffs for both teams Lost for both card, teams. Yeah. And we got to get over the hump sometime. And I'm I'm taking the Browns to win this game. Mm. I say the Browns sweep the AFC North, except for I think the Ravens beat us twice, and I think we beat the Steelers twice, and I think we beat the Bengals twice. Word, bro. I'm also taking uh, Steelers. Uh, no, just kidding. I'm taking uh, the Browns here also. And I, I think just for the reasons that you said, I think that this is, I don't think that we're better than Baltimore as far as at the end of the year for the division. But for wild card, if we really think they're going to make the playoffs and I'm just going to blindly pick Cleveland because I can't help myself. Yeah. Uh, I this have is, to do it. This is one of those things that uh, growing up, you never picked the Steelers. No. That's just me as a rat. It's the worst. They're the worst and then of the I, worst. And then I married my wife, and she's a Steelers fan, and I'll never pick the Steelers. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, but uh, this is one of those games where I think I think it's just that close divisional game. Yep. Um, and I think going into this game, you know, if this is for the playoffs to ride on, this is going to be a heartbreak game if we lose this. Mm-hmm. Knowing that, you know, we had one of the easier schedules, really – uh, on yeah. the year, the whole AFC get, North I mean, is it's yeah, super easy. Yeah, you get to play. You get to play the both New York teams who are mm-hmm. trash. You get to play the Bengals twice in division. Which, yeah, they might be better, but yep. I mean, there's a lot of games you should win. And you know, the article that I'm kind of reading, you know, says this is kind of a, it's a it's a lose lose with our schedule. If we make the playoffs for the first time in forever, they're going to say, oh, because you didn't play anybody, you had the easiest schedule. <laughs> or if you lose and you don't make the playoffs yeah. and you had the easiest schedule, it's just I mean. Colin Cowherd's just waiting. Mm-hmm. I think he's got us going nine and seven, and making the playoffs. I got us. I got us winning this, so that puts me at what eleven and five. You and Blake are both at eleven and five. Eleven and five, and that's not what I said when we kind of said I yeah. had us at nine and seven. So I got us winning a couple more games. I here. think I had us at ten and six. So I, and that was just like a broad mm-hmm. generalization. So the fact that then when I went game by game, I ended at eleven and five. You know, not a bad. You know. This and I got us at eleven and five, and I don't think we win the division. Yeah, no, not that's with crazy. Baltimore. It's crazy. 
So, yep, last game of the season against the Steelers. <laughs> I've never seen them win the game. Um, Do it, Josh. Roethlisberger Pickle. has the most wins of, uh, you know, in uh, in Cleveland Stadium. He gets another <laughs> one here. Oh, come on, so, man. And I'm not kidding on this one. Um, but I do think this is it's going to be a different loss to Pittsburgh, though, this year to end the season. And I, so I got him going nine and seven, and I think they miss the playoffs because there's enough other teams in the AFC with better records. And I think we miss it barely. And I think we're going to lose this game maybe right at the end. I don't know if it's like a last second, maybe we fumble or, you know, we just give up a, a stupid play and they're able to kick the last second field goal, but they beat us. And, but it's going to fuel that off season, right? Because we almost made the playoffs. We almost beat the Steelers. We fought hard. Baker's improved. Chubb has established himself as one of the top, if not mm-hmm. the top running backs. Our defense looks great. Miles Garrett finally maybe leads the, the league in sacks. Yeah. And we missed the playoffs on a last second whatever. Yeah, because this could be... How many times have we seen it where the wild card in the AFC, our division gets two almost mm-hmm. all the time. This could be that game where, you know, we're coming in that's the same type of record as the Steelers. And it's like a, it's almost like a playoff game. Yep. You know, you and win, you games. get in. I just don't think they have. Home. I just don't think they have. The Steelers have enough offense. Their defense is great, and if Big Ben is you know as good as he can be, he's very good. But he has always had good talent around him, and I think he does not have that much offensive talent around the him. The Steelers. Year. The thing is, I agree with you on paper, but man, I just year after year I watch them make something out of nothing when they yep. don't have anything, and all of a sudden you've got. Guys, you didn't even know their name, and, and they're you know up in the league in receiving yards or whatever. So, I mean, Tomlin almost had that team making the playoffs last year with what they had going on. Yeah, at quarterback. yeah, but also at the same time, look how down our division was last year. There's one good team. We were trash. The Bengals were super trash. <laughs> you know, and the and the Steelers, you know, were just barely better than us. We beat them. Yeah, and then they the, 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 us. the biggest difference between us and the Steelers last year is they won the games that they were supposed to win. Um, you know, like they didn't lose any games where they had two touchdown leads and with a minute to go in the half, they give up two touchdowns. You know, mm-hmm. that's the only we beat that what second to last game of the year, we beat them. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I, I really do like. And I, I, like I said at the beginning when we started doing this podcast, you know, three months ago or whatever, I am kind of backing myself off of trying to get too hyped over Stefanski and, and any of this new stuff because I've, I've seen too many times what happens when a new coach comes in and, you know, it just takes time to get up and running. And I was so hyped for Freddie and that guy was a joke. So <laughs> I think Stefanski is a good coach. I think he will be, but I think this has got to be that, this is going to be a learning year. We're going to do well. And we're, I think, you know, coming up short is going to just show that we fought hard and we've got, you know, some still some things to learn and grow. But the growing process through this season is going to be different than what we've experienced before. Because right. instead of getting worse and worse and worse and yep. looking <laughs> stupid half the time, we're going to be losing games, but we're going to lose them because we were, we just came up short. It's yeah. rough because we just kind of, I feel like we just had that kind of game. What, two years against Baltimore came, came yeah. down right to the end. It was like, yeah. hey, all you got to do is beat these guys. And we you know, we're slowing down Lamar and we have a chance and we saw yeah. the best of Baker that game and the worst of Baker that yeah. game. We yeah. three picks but three touchdowns. Yeah. He's the only reason we were in the game and the only reason we lost the game. Now you're yeah. talking yeah. two years ago, right? Yeah. So his yeah. rookie season, that's yep. a yeah. thing though, man. I mean I that was fun. I heart Baker. And I know you I mean as <laughs> oh, an yeah. Oklahoma guy, like oh, I, yeah. I love the guy. He's my guy. I think he's he's got <laughs> such a he's got the personality that we need. On the Browns. I don't know about that. I don't know. Like, my thing is, like, I want, like, I I love Baker, but there's times where I'm like, man, I would rather you just go out and perform than just chirp and all. Like, yeah, but if he wins, you're going to love that about him. Yeah. Okay. Who who is your ideal quarterback in the league? Like, if you had to just, you know, construct a quarterback and you're going to pick, I want this guy's uh, physical, you know, makeup. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, his mental makeup. Which, which, Which quarterback are you taking? Russell Wilson. Okay. Oh, if you got your own mental makeup, you got to pick Tom Brady. Okay. I don't like Tom Brady that much. <laughs> He's okay. He's what are you thinking, Zach? I'm going to go, like, if, if I'm picking one quarterback, like, his, like, skill set, is that what you're... Is that, no, just, like, his mental makeup, His right? mental yeah. makeup. As crazy as it sounds, I'm going Pat Mahomes. 
as crazy as it sounds. I mean, I know he's young, but mm-hmm. that guy's been in situations just like last year in the playoffs when he's down to Ain't Houston, nothing. and it was and, nothing. And, and it was San like, Francisco. And it was, it was nothing. He was right. I mean, it, it didn't phase him at all. Yep. He's like, oh, I'll have to give that challenge. You want to start up 24 points or whatnot to kick off the game? You know, that's fine. Patrick me. Mahomes reminds me of like, like people when they're teenagers and they think they're invincible and they can't, you know, yeah. I can drive my car as fast as I want. I won't die. And yeah. Mahomes is like, okay, you can be up 24, nothing. I don't care. I'm not going to lose. Yeah. Right. And I, uh, the, the Baker thing kind of, we talked about, Justin said, you know, about Baker can be a cocky guy, uh, you know, and when he's winning and he's like rolling, you know, he can, he, he shows it and he's not afraid to do that. My thing is, that's when Baker's at his best mm-hmm. is when he's like in your face and like the dead, couple, woke couple, up dangerous, you know, yeah, yeah. like when he's, when he's feeling that type of way, uh, he, uh, he comes out and he's successful back in college, you know, <laughs> the one game where they were playing Buffalo, I think it was or something. <laughs> and they were like taking cheap shots at him. He's like chirping on the sidelines, looking over. I've grabbing seen that places. Yeah, I was going to say, is that the, <laughs> that yeah, was yeah, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't that Kentucky. Oh yeah. It was Kentucky, not Buffalo. Yeah. So Kentucky oh, and he, was it Kansas? Kansas? I, I thought it was Kansas. I don't know what it was. Kansas, yeah, because it was a big thing. It was at their stadium, yeah, yeah. on the fifty yard line. Like they weren't, they weren't shaking Sam. That's who it was. We were guessing all the blue and white teams and whatnot. <laughs> uh, but the, and they were terrible that year. But Baker and Baker just giving it to him to a team that had like two wins on the whole season on the sidelines. So here's my thing about Baker's attitude. If if Baker acts the way he does and we lose. He's cocky. He's Johnny Manziel 2.0. But anytime somebody has that attitude and they win, it's their fierce competitor. Uh, mm-hmm. All they do is push their teammates. To, Michael Jordan's like the cockiest player of all time, and that's why people love him. Kobe. Yeah, um, like Kobe. Kobe, Kobe like, like make his teammates cry in practice. Cause in, yeah. But that's why people love like, him. Oh, but he loved us. Yeah. He, loved it. he did it out of love. You know, so... <laughs> It's, you know, it's a double-edged sword. You know, if you're going to be the way Baker is and you got to win or you're going to yeah. get called Johnny 2.0 um, because if he starts winning all of a sudden he goes from Johnny to he's just a fierce competitor and all he wants to do is win. Yeah. And uh, such a, such a love hate thing. Cause what I just, I'll never forget that game against Ohio state when Baker planted the flag afterward oh, and that oh entire God. game, I, I was sitting there shirt. and I'm like at that moment in time, there was not a person in the world that I hated more than Baker Mayfield yeah, no kidding. <laughs> because we couldn't there, stop him. There I'm wasn't like, a person I loved more. In the world that <laughs> <laughs> but whenever we drafted him, that's what I kept going back to was as much as I, I hated him in that game. It was because he was dominating us. Yeah, that second half of that game was wild. In, oh, it's unreal. He's but got it. He's got the. He's got that's the potential. A guy, man. That's it's a guy there. that's coming to the NFL soon. Lincoln Riley. I think he's he just signed an extension. I know, but I think he's coming soon. I think he. I don't know, man. Uh, he's so. I think he's comfortable. I don't he's think so he'll be good. able to turn it down too much longer. Yeah, yeah, he's so good. Especially like I thought it was hard for him to turn down wanting Dallas because Jerry Jones is pretty much like, hey, here's the keys to Jerry World if you want them. I agree, but. Why tarnish your reputation? If he, all he does if, is all he does is Graham Heisman quarterback. If he stays in Oklahoma for like the next twenty years, he's going to go down as maybe one of the greatest college football coaches of all oh, time. Trust yeah. me, I don't want him to leave. You know, I don't want him to go. I feel like it's a big risk for these guys. These guys who are, who are really good in college, it, it, in in college, you get paid so much money, and you you literally can do whatever you want. You the players are not professionals; they're seventeen years old. You can make them do whatever you want. Yep. It's a completely different ball game in the pros. And you're getting nothing but five, especially like a program like Oklahoma, nothing but five stars. Yeah. And yeah. You, you take over a garbage take, team in the NFL. You're taking Texas players from Texas. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you get to play <laughs> eight pancakes, you know, a year. You got to gear up your team to play four tough games a year. And the NFL, every week, you got to have your guys ready. Yeah, I think the money will just end up being too good. I, I think mean, the, the college can pay way more. The highest paid state employee in every state is that team's college football coach. Like Urban Meyer was the highest paid state official because technically it's a state school. So Urban Meyer just living the life right now, by the way. <laughs> he's mm. kind of employed by Ohio State University or whatnot. Kind still, of employed by Fox. Yeah. He's just kind of employed by everybody. <laughs> he's just doing, <laughs> doing every, whatever he wants. Yeah. All right. So what, 11 and 5, 11 and 5. Uh, Justin's 10 and six and I was nine and seven. So we're all pretty close. Like you said, different roadmap getting there, but general ballpark, hopefully me and Zach are right. Or even Justin, if we don't make the playoffs, I'm going to blame you for, uh, jinxing us or just telling it like it is. (laughs) (laughs) Right. 
Well, hey, uh, you know, before we wrap up this episode, um, that was our schedule breakdown. It was a lot of fun. Let us know what you guys think. If you guys think 11 and 5 is crazy, which when I say it out loud, it might be crazy, but I'm sticking to it. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Um, before we wrap this up, I want to, you know, give another shout out. Everybody go check out Percy Gardner's podcast, 99 miles per hour with Percy Gardner. Um, I watch it every week. You know, he has some really fun guests on there. Um, go check it out. It's a really good podcast. It's on our network. He's also got gear on the uh, merch store. So uh, throw him some love, give him some support. Uh, thanks everybody for checking out the episode again. Let us know what you think of our predictions. Uh, let us know on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Please, please subscribe on YouTube. We're trying to get to that uh, 100 subscriber goal so we can have our own personal, uh, I think, uh, URL. You'll be able to find us easier. Um, Other than that, uh, stay tuned for upcoming episodes, and everybody have a good week.